Mac Voices is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. And by Linode, your solution when you need a virtual server in the cloud. Use the code MACVOICES2019 to take $20 off your first purchase at linode.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, just when you thought we were done with Mac Stock, no, we have one more thing to do, and that's wrap up Mac Stock 2019 with the organizer, Mr. Mike Potter. Mike, welcome. It's good to see you. Hey, Chuck. It's good to see you, too. Just when you thought you couldn't escape, we pull you back in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I didn't want... I, I, I finished uh, the interviews I recorded at Mac Stock, and I just felt... It just didn't feel like we were we were finished until you and I did a little bit of a wrap up session like we have in other years to sort of dissect the event, see how it went, see what you thought. Um, I know everybody I everyone I talked to, I know what they thought. But how did you feel it went? Oh, I think it went phenomenally. Uh, it was just a fantastic weekend. We had uh, so many new people. That was one of the things that made Max Doc so special this year is how many new folks had come to it and uh, enjoyed it so much, they made a point of coming up to me and said, I, you know, I'm gonna be back again next year, which is always great to hear. Um, I did wanna to touch on those videos real quick. I love those, those videos you recorded at MaxDoc because uh, not only were you talking to speakers and volunteers and such like you did on Road to MaxDoc, but you got to talk to the attendees this time. You got to talk to the people who make MaxDoc, MaxDoc. And I, I really loved watching those. Well, I love doing them. I, I unfortunately didn't get to do as many as I would have liked to, simply because I was busy being kind of in the moment at the event with the people, as yeah. opposed to just dragging everybody in front of a camera. But I did, I, I focused a little bit this year more on some of the first time attendees um, and getting their reaction. And it just blew me away how enthusiastic they were. Um, and of course, Ian Dunn, uh, I interviewed Ian, he was from Perth, Australia. 20... 11,000 miles, 11,000 miles he came. Yeah, 28, 28 hours one way on a plane, you know, to come to Max Stock for a weekend. No, no extra trips, no sightseeing, just there and back. What I that love tell? Ian. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, everybody I saw really loved it. I know there were a lot of a lot of discussion, positive discussion, I should be very clear, about some of the different things you did this year with uh, L. Newman's Yoga for Nerds um, yeah. and, and all that. So there, you just keep expanding this out and adding little things and it, it just, it works top to bottom. Well, you know, and these new things that we add come about because of the suggestions of the folks who've attended. They come about because of suggestions of past speakers. Uh, it, it It's I've said this before, it truly is a community event because every year those new things we bring about are like Elle, for example, the yoga for nerds. That was entirely her idea. She came up with it. She said, I'd like to do this. I've done this at other conferences. I think folks might be able to, to benefit from it. She was thrilled with the result. She said that uh, she never had such a positive reaction to it as she had at MaxDoc. It was just, it, it true. the people there truly made it feel like it was worthwhile to her to do this. And then uh, uh, Mac Power Users 500, that came about because David reached out to me and said, hey, you know, it's going to be about that time, episode 500. What do you think about us recording it at MacStock? And, you know, sure enough, we did. And, and it, you know, I know MPU was one of the reasons Ian came out those 11,000 miles from Australia was, was uh, to kind of catch that. That was the clincher for him. Um, and, and it may have been for some other folks, too. But we try to do something new every year, and I've got, I've got a couple ideas for new things to do next year already, too. Well, and, and you know, we don't want to. Uh, we definitely want to recognize Ian, but you had Rose Orchard come over from uh, Zurich. Austria. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, Martin from the Netherlands. Yep. Mike Laplante came down from Canada. You, you know, you had. It, it truly is an international audience, and and I. That's one of the things I love about it, um, because you come there, and of course all those international barriers that you see on the evening news every night just disappear because these are all people. They're just people. They're all Apple users and they want to be there. 
they want to be there. And I was thinking earlier about some of the special things that I got to take part in because of all these wonderful folks coming in from around the world. And uh, I, you know, I got to sample licorices from the Netherlands that Martin brought over, uh, chocolates from the Ukraine. Um, what else do we have? Uh, there was like, uh, oh, oh, the uh, Josh Wrench. Uh, one of our presenters this year brought down some handcrafted cheeses that he smoked in, in in his smoker. I mean, this is this is the kind of thing. This can really only happen at MaxDoc. What other tech conference can you go to where you're you're sampling all these wonderful foods from around the world, get to meet all these wonderful people from around the world, and just have a great a great weekend? Yeah. And the, the Saturday night events were great. Um, Dave Hamilton and John F. Braun did a live Mac Geek Ab. Um, so, and, and I guess the theme that keeps playing back in my mind, Mike, is that these are people that have been there before. Most of them have been there before. And they want to come back, but they want to be part of it. They, you know, right. it doesn't mean they have to be on the main stage, but they just want to have a piece in improving the event. And that's that's got to be a huge tribute, and I would hope in your mind to the success of MaxDoc, and and even those folks like Norbert who didn't necessarily reach out and said, "Hey, I want to volunteer this year," but when I did ask him, "Would you like to volunteer? Would you like to help out with the cameras this year?" said, "Absolutely, I'd love to help a what did he say a fellow tech geek out," and he did a great job. And it's you know thanks to Norbert, it's making my job a lot easier getting those digital passes out. Oh, that's great. Well, I want to get to the digital passes in a second, but I want to mention one other person um, that I interviewed that was arguably my favorite interview of Mac Stock. And that was, yeah. who, who was it? No, no, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. okay. It, it had to be Lydia. Yeah. It had to be Lydia. Um, yeah. What an impressive young woman. Um, and folks, if you haven't seen it, you should go back to the Mac Voices archives. She did a uh, an entry into Wally Cherwinski's uh, film festival for Max Doc while she was on site during one of the presentations. Right. Um, and it just, it, she, I, it just was so impressed. I mean, she's one of those like, okay, she is clearly the smartest person in the room, especially if she's standing next to me. I don't know if she started using notability because of Dave's talk or if she was using notability before, but her entire um, Max Doc film fest entry was created in notability if I recall correctly, and uh, it, it was really, it, and she combined it with sketch notes. So Kirshen Sia's talk on sketch notes and Dave's talk on on taking notes, uh, kind of combined together into making this this entry for the film fest. That was just a it was just fun, a phenomenal job that she did with it, and I think she had it edited down to what a minute thirty something like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, she talked about uh, the the. Um, in, in the interview with you, she talked about the, well, I shouldn't say difficulties, but the the uh, challenges she had trying to get it down to that time frame, uh, the ability to speed up or slow down the video based on, um, uh, couldn't be done in iMovie, I guess. So she had to use, what was the, vi the video? Luma Fusion. Luma Fusion, you're right. Yeah. Which also was talked about on the stage at Max Talk. So uh, it, it was uh, a, a community video, really, uh, that was uh, totally Lydia's creation, but it pulled from the different things that were being presented on stage, whether intentionally or not. And that was pretty cool. It was very cool. It was very cool. And I, I just, I love the fact, because I've, I've made a point of trying to talk to at least one young young person <laughs> at, at each year's Mac stock. And it was just a delight to talk to her. Um, and see what she'd created and and on the fly yet. So right. I I sincerely hope that that she makes it back again because I I want to see what she comes up with next. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, the 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 varied age range of people who attend MaxDoc, um, th those age differences pretty much disappear when you're sitting there around the lunch table. You're sitting next to them in the in the auditorium, or you're chatting with them at the Saturday evening event. That suddenly that that those differences that you might look at on a very superficial nature, they just melt away. And you realize you're just talking to a very intelligent person, whether, you know, uh, whether it's a retiree or whether it's a, a young woman uh, in high school or whatever, it, it just all all disappears. And we, we just all um, gravitate toward that commonality, which are these these Apple products that have brought us together. 
but it's really our varied experiences that make the weekend special. And if any of you think that Max Talk is deadly serious, go back and watch some of my interviews and watch the photo bombs I got that I didn't even know happened until I got home and was editing the videos. I, I, I might have been in one or two of those. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to call out everybody that was because I almost, I, I'm afraid I will admit somebody that should get credit for it. But it's right. just one more, th one more thing that it, the whole event is just fun, and and every you know, another in, at other conferences, you might growl about that. At Max Stock, you just grin and say, "Oh yeah, that's terrific. That's that's exactly the spirit of Max Stock." And, and where else, you know, I was also thinking, where else but Max Talk? I was, I was scrambling to pull together all the links and stories and podcasts and everything I could find for the newsletter I put out this last weekend. It turns out Joe Bulling had already done all that. He had put together this wonderful blog post. And not only did he include the podcast and, and uh, blog posts and things like that, but he included tweets and photos and all this stuff. It was just a wonderful uh, retrospective on the weekend. And I really wish I had seen it before I sent out that newsletter because I could have just said, here, here's one link <laughs> and that'll show you everything that you need to know about the weekend uh, and at least give you a great taste for why you might want to be there next year. But, you know, he didn't have to do that, but it's something he wanted to do. He wanted it for his own purposes, but then he also wanted to share it with the world. And again, that's what, that's what Max Talk is all about. It's that sharing, but again, it's it's that wanting to be wanting to have some small part in it, not out of ego or anything like that, but just you know you've it's like a, I guess a community event that you see you think is worthwhile and you want to support, and this is just a much broader community event that we all want to support. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's that's so incredibly gratifying to me because that's always been the intent of Max Doc since day one. That's what I hoped people would get out of it. And it's, it's so nice to see that that's exactly what's happening. So you mentioned the digital past. And I want to make sure we get to that because there are plenty of people that couldn't make it to Mac stock for oh, whatever sure. reason, but there's a way that, and it's, I sound like a, a pitch man, sorry, but there is a way that you can uh, experience at least the presentations and a little bit of the Mac stock environment. And that is the digital pass. Yeah. Yeah. The digital pass is something we came up with new last year. It kind of came about, a little bit on accident, really. Uh, Oliver from Boeing Software was supposed to come out last year, and we were going to live stream it. We we're going to we we're going to make an attempt at live streaming MaxDoc, and uh, a business um, business situation came up, and Oliver couldn't be there the whole weekend. So I said, "All right, well, what can we do that would still kind of give this feeling of being there, even if it's not being live streamed at the moment?" And so I had stumbled across, excuse me, another digital pass, uh, and I think they actually called it that, so I, <laughs> I somewhat borrowed the name, um, but another digital pass where they did exactly that. They just left the cameras rolling in between the talks, maybe threw up a sponsor card or two in between, and it has that feeling of being there without actually being there. Uh, and granted, it's limited to what's happening on the main stage. You don't get those... Uh, in between session conversations in the hallway, you don't get the you don't get the stuff that makes Max Tech truly truly special if you can be there in person. But if you can't be there, you do catch a little bit of it. You catch what's happening on stage as folks are setting up for their next talk. You do catch a couple conversations that happen up there, but then you also get those main stage presentations, the twenty minute talks in the morning, the deeper dives in the afternoon, and then uh, provided they all turned out okay, we'll have the deeper dives from the breakout room as well. And I, I only say provided they turned out okay, because I haven't actually taken that SD card and, and checked it out yet to make sure that those turned out. But the, the main stage stuff is, is um, going along quite well. I have all the talks. By the time folks hear this, I will have had all the talks from Saturday, except for the Mac Power Users 500, and I'll talk about why in just a moment. Um, and then uh, probably the first few talks from Sunday will have been published. And folks are already out there uh, logging in, checking out the, the talks. And for the folks who have been there, who did attend MaxDoc, uh, it's a chance for them to go back and kind of review some of the stuff that maybe they missed or they were, they were out in the hallway having one of those conversations and didn't catch a full talk. 
Uh, in my case, I don't always catch all the full talks. So this has been really great for me to go through the video too and be able to just see just, just how wonderful all these talks were that we had on stage this year. Yeah, I, I, of course, I was participating in a lot of the audience or uh, in the hallway talks, doing some of the interviews or prepping for my own sessions. So right. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the talks that I didn't get a chance to see. And frankly, there were one or two that I want to go back and make a few more notes than I had the opportunity to because it's information that I was I was really intrigued by or found relevant. And now I have to now I have to go and implement that. And what's great is this is only the second year of the digital pass, but folks are finding value in it. Uh, they are coming back. Folks who purchased digital pass in the in the past are purchasing them again. And uh, you know, like you said, it's you, you can't make it for whatever reason, whether it's uh, personal reasons or business reasons, or you just don't have vacation time or whatever. Uh, it's still a good way to uh, get to enjoy the the talks that happen at MaxDoc. Um, but I'm learning from it every year, too, and I already have some ideas for how to improve it again for next year. Uh, some of the things we did this year, like be, being able to capture the slides or the screens of the presenters' laptops as they were talking, we might have had a glitch or two with that, but that was something new this year, and it was an idea I had after doing last year's pass. And now I have some thoughts on how maybe I can do that better for next year. So every year, MaxDoc just gets a, a, just a little bit better. Uh, a little bit more streamlined, and it's it's all um, just kind of builds upon itself every year. And uh, I'm 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 looking forward to 2020. Mint Mobile is sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices, and that makes me very happy. Why? Because Mint Mobile is different than those other big wireless providers that all do the same thing the same way and expect you to keep footing the bill. Mint Mobile is a new kind of carrier doing business online without the need for big expensive retail stores and they pass the savings on to you. My Mint Mobile experience started about a week before I was doing some traveling. I popped my old SIM out of my iPhone, put the new SIM in, and went through the very easy activation process, and was up and running in no time. Then I took my new phone from central Pennsylvania to Chicago, then to Boston, and then on to Las Vegas, and never missed a beat. My only reminder was seeing Mint at the top of my iPhone screen instead of my old carrier. You can have that same experience and cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month, and that includes unlimited nationwide talk and text. Stop paying for unlimited data you'll never use. Mint Mobile has plans with 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes of LTE data. Isn't it time you reevaluated your cell carrier? Give Mint Mobile a look, cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month, and get the plan shipped to your door for free by visiting mintmobile.com slash macvoices. That's mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Mint Mobile for their support of Mac Voices. Speaking of 2020, since, yes. you, since you happen to bring it up, um, you announced the topic for the theme. Mac Stock. The theme, excuse me, the yes. theme for Mac Stock 2020. And I'm not going to steal your thunder because I this came up in, in an, uh, a Mac Voices I did a little while ago with someone. And I said, no, I don't want to steal Mike's thunder. If he wants to announce it, um, he can. And if he doesn't, then that's fine. But do you want to reveal what the, 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 the theme is? Oh, sure, sure. Um, I, I announced it at the end of uh, Mac Stock this year. It's just like I did last year. Uh, if you recall, in 2018, I started theming the talks. I, I, it, it's a one-word theme that I come up with every year, and last year's theme was productivity. Uh, it, kind of a softball, you know, for the first time. It was, it was something new, again, I, when I was, I was trying it out, and I said, hey, how can, how can I kind of um, challenge the speakers to... Uh, craft talks that fit within a particular, well, theme. <laughs> and so last year I went with productivity. It was a, it was a nice um, way to start out that and see how well it worked. And at the end of uh, Max Stack 2018, I announced that this year's theme, a 2019's theme would be create. And again, it was challenging the speakers to kind of think outside of their comfort zones, if you will. Um, uh, and you and Allison both actually are great examples of this because you both said, well, we're not creative people, right? But you both came up with wonderfully creative presentations and you both came up with very interesting ways of 
what the theme create means to you. And that's all I ask people to do. I'm not asking them to, to stick with a particular topic or to focus solely on using affinity photo or designer or, or what have you. It's what does that word create mean to you? And so uh, again, I'm challenging folks in 2020 with the theme of play. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you? What does it mean to, uh, to the folks? And I've already, I've already heard from, from people who are doing exactly that. They're thinking outside the box. They're trying to figure out how that fits into their life. And they already said, hey, I'm ready to submit when you're ready to, to uh, accept a presentation proposal. So uh, I think we're going to have some really amazing talks next year, too. You 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 push us a little bit. You stretch us a little bit. Um, I've got my own ideas, and whether you like them or not, I don't know. But you know, I've, <laughs> I've got my own ideas. So yeah, it it is an interesting way to do it. And you know, we should probably stress that no, this is not going to turn into a game conference. No, no, not <laughs> that's, at all. That's not. That's, that's exactly that's, the opposite of the intention. Right. Just like it was, it was not intended to become a, a conference this year on photography or digital art or, or what have you. And it certainly did not become that. And I think if anyone goes and looks at the schedule for this year, uh, whether you have a digital pass or whether you attend it in person, you'd see that that's, that's exactly what didn't happen. We did not become a creative conference. We just became a, a, um, a tech or more specifically a, an Apple focused conference that just happened to have the theme of create. And that's exactly what 2020 will be. It's going to be that same Apple-focused conference, but it'll just happen to have the theme of play. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, of course, I never, I don't see the submissions. You see the submissions, but I do. To, to seeing what the submissions are and the, the ones that get selected and how they're delivered. Because um, it, it just, it, it's the idea, I mean, we talked about it earlier, that you're doing different things, but you're also forcing a little bit of a change each year. That, right. So it's not just, okay, I'm going to go back to Woodstock, Illinois for more talks on Apple and then, you know, party on Saturday night and then head home on, on Sunday after the last session. Not only will there be some new things, but the presentations will take a little bit different tact and a little different angle and maybe be nuance just a little bit differently. I, I really appreciate that about Mac stock and well, keeping it fresh. Yeah. Keeping and this will be the sixth different and you're headed into the sixth year. So obviously people are responding to this, this concept. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exciting. And you know what I would like to do and not, not necessarily today, but I would like to talk about maybe after I start accepting proposals for next year, I'd love to come on and talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff with Mac stock and specifically, I'd like to talk about the uh, presentation uh, selection process. It's it's actually a fairly involved process that I've adopted because, uh, 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 you know, a little, little preview here. It, as the person who kind of organizes the weekend, it was getting more difficult for me every year to be that person to say, well, I'm going to accept that talk, but not accept that talk when I really want to accept all the talks. I mean, I'm the kind of person who says, okay, well, I'll just add another day. I'll just add another day. And then pretty soon we're at three weeks long because I can't reject any talks. So I had to come up with a process that uh, was fair and uh, uh, provided an equal, truly equal opportunity way for everyone to have a chance to uh, be selected. And and I'd love to talk about that on a future episode because uh, I, I don't know how unique the process is, but it's something that I came up with uh, just to be as fair and equitable as possible to everyone who submitted. Linode is supporting this edition of Mac Voices. You can build it on Linode. One problem with so many virtual cloud hosts is the hidden costs. What looks to be a good deal at the start isn't so great when the bill comes. Fees for extra services, extra capabilities, data transfer, and the like all build up. With Linode, you don't have to worry. Plans range from a $5 per month Nanodes plan up to a high-powered dedicated CPU server. Even better, you can start with one and grow into another with just a few clicks. CPU, network, storage, 
and RAM, all bundled into one low price with no surprises and the ability to upgrade anytime you wish. Pay for only what you use with hourly billing across all plans and add-on services. And that is on top of all the other considerations that you have to take into account when picking a server host. Speed of your server, backups, options for one-click installs, geographic location of your server, documentation, customer support, the list goes on and on. Linode has lots going for it, and you can turn that into lots going for you by visiting linode.com slash macvoices and check out all the options. Then, when you buy, be sure to use that same URL, linode.com slash macvoices, to get $20 off your first purchase. What are you waiting for? Your virtual server awaits at linode.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Linode for their support of this week's Mac Voices. Well, once you get the digital pass videos all edited and you've had a chance to catch up on a little bit of sleep, then by all means, come back or we'll do it, you know, as part of the prep for next year's show, whatever you want, whatever you want. Uh, would love to hear about that a little more because it, it, it lends a little transparency because I know there were a lot of people that did submit that just by the very nature of a lot of people submitting couldn't be selected. So, right. Right. And, and, and so many of those folks actually attended this year too. Um, but I, I do take pains to explain the process to everyone and, and uh, uh, let them know how it works, uh, how their talks were selected and, um, and everyone, everyone pretty much understood that. Yeah. Okay. I, I get it. I see how that works. And, and I, th I, I, I agree. I think a little transparency is a good thing. And, and I'd like folks to know how, how we go about doing that every year. Well, I, I've, on behalf of everyone that attended and the people that are enjoying through the digital pass, thank you for all that, that you do for putting this on so we can all come see old friends, meet new ones, and just have a great time a week, one weekend a year. Well, you're, you're very, very welcome. But, you know, I said it before, I really can't do it without you. I can't do it without, uh, I can't do it without the attendees. I can't do it without the volunteers and uh, certainly can't can't do it without the the presenters so uh it it's a it's a group effort i'm i might be the organizer i might be you know pulling some of the strings here and there but it it truly is a group effort and uh everyone should get the thanks for making it the the weekend that it is well and folks i'm sorry if it's if we're gushing a little bit that's just honestly that's my reaction to it that's the way i feel about this particular event there, i've been to a lot of conferences there's nothing quite like max stock and i mean that as sincerely as i possibly can and i enjoy a lot of other conferences for different reasons this one is just unique and i really really hope that you will put it on the calendar for next year start making your plans and come and join us well, you know, uh, the the one thing that uh, we didn't talk about, we talked about the theme, but I could certainly give you the dates for next year if, if anyone oh. is interested, because I think it's probably a good idea. I've learned this uh, the, the hard way, if you will, but it's a good idea to get those dates on the calendar as quick as possible. So I've, I've tried my hardest to get those dates announced at the end of MaxDoc weekend every year. And uh, I, I was happy to announce at the end of MaxDoc 2019, that not only did we have a theme of play, but the dates for Max Doc 2020 are going to be July 25th and 26th, 2020. Perfect. So if, if, if you'd like to go ahead and mark those out on your calendar, and I'll even, I'll even give a little, a little um, uh, preview to all your viewers and all your listeners here. Uh, we did a Cyber Monday sale last year. I'm going to be doing that again this year. So sign up for the Max Doc newsletter. That's going to be... Uh, really the only place where you can hear about the Cyber Monday sale and when it starts. And that's going to be the absolute best pricing you can get on Max Talk tickets in, a, in that one day sale. So uh, mark, mark it on your calendar, but you know, it's, it, it's a, it's Cyber Monday is pretty much a holiday you can't miss every year. <laughs> and, and uh, that along with Black Friday and uh, Cyber Monday specifically, we're going to have a special sale on Max Talk 2020 tickets again. Great. And I want to throw in one last thing, um, with Mike's permission, because the one thing that we really didn't have a, a, a place or a way to do was to share um, photographs and some of the things that, is, as Mike said, Joe Buick put in his blog post. So there is now a Mac Stock fan page on Facebook. Um, so if you have photos you'd like to share, if you did something for Mac Stock or 
were at Max Talk and would like to post something there, please feel free. Because the, the purpose behind that page is to do nothing more than just enjoy the 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 memories of this Mac stock and any past Mac stocks as well and uh, get ready for next year's. So check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. That's, that's going to be a fantastic resource for everyone. Well, it's, it, it, I, I'm encouraging everybody, you know, it's not, it's not just mine. It's, it is truly a fan page. I just happened to, to put it up and, uh, but I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that your photos are absolutely welcome there would love to have that or any commentary about what a great time you had at max talk that's that's what this is all about absolutely so mike we got to get you back when you're not wearing your max talk hat uh literally or figuratively um so uh we'll look for a future appearance on mac voices um to talk about whatever because there's there's always a little something happening in the apple world yeah, there's always something happening, and I understand there might be something happening in a in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the word. We shall see. We yeah. shall see. Uh, so, Max Conference and Expo dot com. Did I have that right? Max Conference and Expo dot com. Yeah, that'll redirect you to whatever the current version of the website is. Mike, we'll see you again soon, and thanks thanks one more time for a great weekend. And thank you, Chuck. I appreciate being on, and looking forward to next time. Folks, this is Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner. Mike gave you the dates. Put it on your calendar. Join us. We're going to have a ball at Mac Stock 2020. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.